بالخدمة مع لارا تو سليمان ناو لايف اون صوت الغد Are you a busy mom in business juggling a million responsibility and doubting your abilities of establishing a balance? Watch out. Your thoughts and beliefs might be your biggest hindrance stopping you from creating the success that you want. Angela Council, health and mindset coach, 10-year clinical naturopath and author of Amazon's 2014 bestseller, Secret of Mom's Business is on the phone with us today. Angela, thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Now let's start is work life balance a myth? Oh, I think it is. I think it's uh, totally a myth and it's something that keeps women so stressed while they're trying to achieve it. And what's so the many, solution? Well, I I think it's about finding out what works for you. Mm. And when we're out there and we, we're comparing what other women are doing and we think that they have a perfect life, we really don't know what's going on and When you're trying to balance something, if you think of balance as one playing off against the other, you know, if you're in business or you work and you've um, got family, you're trying to compete one against the other and, you know, you just can't do that. So I believe it's about finding harmony. Mm. Find out how it all works for you, how the bit comes together for you and what works for you is right for you and it may not work for your next door neighbour. Mm -hmm. So it might not be the perfect balance. But it works for I, you. I don't think that anything is perfect because if you get it to this so-called perfect balance, it'll tip off balance really, really easily. Mm. So it's about being able to go with the ebbs and the flows. Sometimes you might have to spend you know, more time in your business. Other times you'll be spending more time with your family. But it's like what, what makes you happy? Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Do you, do, you, do you revisit your priorities? Well, that's what, when, I, when I wrote my book, one of the key things was what's really important to you. So get your values right first. When you can know what your true values are and what's really important to you, you start there. Mm -hmm. And by having your values clear for you, and a lot of women don't know what their values are or they're not living their values because they really haven't sat down and thought about what's really important to me, what do I want to achieve. And then my next step after that is, well, What's my big picture? What, am I try what difference am I trying to make in the world? So I generally have women create a three-year vision. Mm. So where do they see themselves in three years so that they've got something to work towards rather than every single day getting out of bed, doing exactly the same thing and like Groundhog Day going over and over and over but mm -hmm. not having a big picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think when you've got that, then you can say no to the things that, really aren't in line with that and it, it becomes easier you say well no that's not where i want to go and it gives you direction and clarity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now theoretically that sounds very attractive but how do you apply it <laughs> it actually it does work <laughs> <laughs> that's great to hear <laughs> <laughs> well, because i I'll, i'll be honest when i wrote my book mm. i wrote about it because i knew it mm -hmm. and but i wasn't living it And then when I started to live it, it actually really does work. When mm. I got really clear on what was important to me, what was important to me, because my, my values are around my family, so I had to create something that was really important to my family. And I created a vision, and I've got a vision, and I know exactly where I'm going. And it, honestly, it took a lot of the stress out. Mm -hmm. The guilt, I've just dropped the guilt because guilt's a wasted emotion as far as I'm concerned, mm. yeah, honestly. We feel guilty about things, but that's we do. us. Other people don't have, the, you know, the things we're feeling guilty about, we might be feeling guilty about our kids or our partners. They're actually not feeling the same way. Mm. So we tend to kind of, we put all this stuff on ourselves, whereas if you just let it go, you just drop the stress. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop on the, the top of the sense of guilt a bit there um, because it's a big issue for working mothers. It seems like with every business suit, you do have a, a brooch of guilt that you pin to your suit. So as yeah. you're leaving the house to work, you're feeling guilty about, about leaving your kids alone. And as you're driving back 
um, in the afternoon and it's getting darker, just, just that guilt comes back to you. What am I doing with my life? What am I achieving? Am I failing to do both? So am I leaving my kids for money or for satisfaction? Am I not getting what I want? So women are always too busy analyzing what they're doing. So how, how do you treat that sense of guilt? Well, I think it's not only that they're analyzing, they're also living someone else's values. Mm. Because they think they should do things or they think they need to do things or they have to do things. And whenever those words are coming through your head, that's not your values. Mm -hmm. That's doing that's doing what society expects of you or what your family expects of you. When you do things because you truly want to and it comes from your heart, mm -hmm. the, the guilt goes. Because if you're going to work because you're making a big difference in the world, you know that you're being a great role model to your children... What's there to feel guilty about? Mm -hmm. yeah, and, yeah, because your kid, basically, as soon as you walk out the door, they've probably forgotten about you anyway because they're just playing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, they don't care because <laughs> they're doing their stuff. <laughs> it, it's good to hear that. <laughs> well, it is. Mm. And with kids, we can actually learn a lot from kids. Mm. Because we look at our kids and our kids are so present to the moment. Mm -hmm. And anyone who's a mum will know how present they are because they will have this massive great big tantrum and two seconds later, it's over. Mm -hmm. But as mums, we're still stewing on it. But yeah. The kids have moved on. And they, they're, they're not sitting there judging you whether or not you're working or you're not working. They just want to go and play. And if you're there, well, that's great. And if you're not, well, then... They'll still play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think we can learn a lot from our kids about the way they see the world. Mm -hmm. So they don't put, feel put yourself in, in their shoes. Don't just yes. apply your own thing. That's right. Because the, the stuff that we have going on in our head that's causing us stress. Mm -hmm. And over time, we can transfer that to our children as they get older. And then, and then they have the issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Angela, you speak of time management in a very interesting way, specifically tailored for women. So, um, so you, you tend to be a bit blunt with women when you talk of time <laughs> management. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, for, a wo for a woman reader, it's like a slap on the face. You do have time. Stop saying I don't have enough time. <laughs> Well, we do. We've all got the same amount of time. Mm, mm. So you say, like, with like the same amount of time, other people have achieved a lot. So stop saying, I don't have enough time. Yes, because when you're in that mindset, and once again, this is coming back to your thoughts, when you're in this, I don't have enough, whether or not it's time, money, whatever, mm. that's basically what it looks like. But if you sweep that around and say, well, look, I've got plenty of time. And mm. once you've prioritized what you're doing, once you know what your values are, once you've got your vision, you get rid of all the stuff mm -hmm. that you don't need to be doing. And I use a term in my book called DIM, do-it-myself syndrome, yeah. which women are so great at doing. But <laughs> yeah. no one can do it as good as me, so I'm going to keep doing it. Mm. And, and honestly, it's just wearing you out. You don't need to be doing it. And how often, you know, as women, we run businesses or we work and then we volunteer at the school and then we do everything at home and then we do in a, you know, we put on the biggest Christmas party out. All this stuff, mm. this, we don't need to. We do what's important to us. And sometimes that means you let go of other things and it doesn't matter what the rest of the world says about that. Mm -hmm. It's what's important to you. Mm -hmm. So I, we build a lot of stuff in our own heads, women. We, we're so good at it. What tips would you give them? So how would you break it down into, um, in, into, into solutions, into a graph, into something that we could go back home and try to do in order to fix that wastage that we have during our day or that lack of good prioritization? Okay, so I use a model that was created by Stephen Covey. Mm. And that's, it's, it's um, called the Four Quadrants. Mm. And once you know your values and your vision, it's easy to do because you just prioritize it into what's important. Mm -hmm. So all the things that are important to you, you do. And then you look at, is this urgent? So things that are important and they're urgent, 
you do them first. So if something's urgent, it means you must do it today. If you don't do it today, it's either going to cost you time or money. So you do all the things that are important to you and urgent first. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you do the things that are important, but they're not urgent. Mm -hmm. And ideally, that's where most of your work should be. So you should only really get to the important things. You're kind of in crisis management once you're doing lots of things that are urgent. So we have important and urgent, important and not urgent. And then we have not important, Mm -hmm. but urgent. And quite often those type of tasks are tasks the urgency is being put on you by somebody else. Mm-hmm. Because if it was important to you, it would already be in your important quadrant. Yeah. But other people tell you things are urgent. So you then have to decide how urgent is this and how important is this. And that's when you need to look and see, well, who's giving me that direction? And sometimes you can actually change those the tasks in that quadrant. And then your fourth quadrant are the things that are not urgent and they're not important. Mm-hmm. And they're the time wasters. Mm-hmm. They're the things that you can let go of. But unfortunately, they're the things that we do when we're procrastinating. They're the things that we do yeah. when we don't want to face the big decisions when we might be afraid and things like that. But that's also things like sitting on Facebook or you know, and wasting our time there or watching TV. And it's okay to do that stuff. Mm. So long as you've got everything else done first. But you can't sit there and say you're really, really busy if you're spending half your day on Facebook. Mm. Do you realise that um, a lot of people do waste a lot of time just on social media? Totally. They yeah. do. It, it does numb your brain, doesn't it? It does. And, and then you sit there and you, you can't just read one post. I'm a, I do this. I do this a lot. So I'm actually a culprit on this one. Mm. And I have to turn it off and I've taken it off my phone because you can't look at one post. Mm. You just going to keep going and keep going. And then you've got to comment. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got to wait for someone else to come back and respond. And you have to keep going back and checking to see if anyone heard what you said. Mm. It's like, it's amazing. It's like begging can... begging for social approval <laughs> instead of it going is. out and actually getting something done. It's done. That's right. Mm. And that, that's where people, and I'd say women are probably doing it more than men. That's where we're wasting time because for some reason Facebook has taken the place of our communities. We don't need to go out and speak to people now and tell them what we're doing. We can just tell them on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Mm. And everyone, people that we never, ever knew all of a sudden know what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. You stop stop receiving calls these days. Oh, yeah, (laughs) I wish wish you a happy birthday on Facebook. (laughs) (laughs) It's adequate. But Mm. it's also a time waster. True. and yeah, so if people are saying they don't have enough time, you've got to look and see where are you spending your time. And you start to look at your priorities. What's important? What's not important? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we should observe a few days of our, of our generic, natural kind of life choices. And how yeah, are we I, spending I, these days? Yeah, I think that um, I think people would be amazed that when they actually sat down and spent two or three days, and that's one of the things I get my clients to do, is to write every single thing they did. Mm. and there's actually apps now that you can put on your phones and on your iPads and everything, and it actually tells you where you go on your computer and how long you spend on your computer or where, how long you spend on certain sites, mm. and that's pretty amazing when you look at it and you realize how much time you are wasting basically doing nothing. True. True. Interesting. Now, another interesting point that you talk about, I have a lot of, um, a lot of notes on your writings, <laughs> is the difference between biological and chronological age. Yeah, so our, um, our cells age at a certain age uh, rate, mm. and sometimes they age faster than our birthday cake, mm. the candles on our birthday cake. And because when I was working in clinic, I used to use different tools that we could actually measure the age of cells and the health of cells. But with the foods and the, the, everything that we're being exposed to, our cells are basically dying quicker and they have to turn over quicker. So we're kind of aging a lot faster and, and, and our organs are getting damaged because we've got all these other, you know, we've got diseases that we've never had in the past. Mm. You know, to see, we see young children now with, you know, things like what used to be called adult onset diabetes. Now they call it diabetes type 2, but we have children with that. We have children who are getting cardiac disease at a very young age yeah. and we we are all dying a lot it, it is two sides of it we're actually dying a lot quicker or we're getting a lot more disease but then we have the medical system which is keeping us alive on medications mm-hmm. but without those medications we probably would have we, we wouldn't be here 
because we have these chronic diseases. And death, to me, death isn't an issue. It's, it's how we're getting there. And we should be living a life where we live a nice, long life and we're healthy and we're vital up until the last few months and then everything kind of goes downhill really, really quick and then we pass peacefully in our sleep. That's mm-hmm. the way life should be. But we don't. You know, at the age of 40, people are on medications and they're on blood pressure medication, you know, diabetes, all these type of medications that they're going to be on for the rest of their lives. And that's what kind of keeps them healthy. But that's not healthy when you need medication to keep you healthy. Mm, that's what that's what's going to keep you surviving, not That's not right. It, just, yeah. it keeps you alive. It doesn't keep you vital because without mm. that medication... You, you basically have all these diseases. But the thing is, you can actually turn all of that around by looking at the foods you're eating, the lifestyle you're making, the type of reducing some of the stresses in your life and because all of it can change and we don't need medications to do it. We can mm-hmm. actually do it by just changing the way we live our lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what, what can we do? Let's start, for example, with food. So food, my favorite topic. I could mm. talk for hours on food. Food... <laughs> We need to be eating food that comes from nature. Now, the food that comes from nature has the exact type of nutrients that our body requires. Men, mm. Humans are quite arrogant because we think as humans that we can go and create a food-like substance and put nutrients in it, mm. but they're synthetic. We're trying to mimic what nature does. But we don't need to do that because we've already got plenty of food, particularly when we're living in a country like Australia. Mm-hmm. We have so much natural produce. And it's all available to us, yet we're going, we're looking at these processed stuff that's full of chemicals, it's full of additives, preservatives. Half the time people don't know what they're eating. They, they turn on the back of a packet and they go, you know, if you read it, you, you need a chemistry degree to actually understand what it is. That's not food. Because mm. mm. our, our body, whilst we use food, our body doesn't need food as such. What it needs is nutrients. But nutrients come packaged in food, but not all foods have got nutrients in it. So mm-hmm. we need to get back to be filling our body up with nutrition. And honestly, whether you want to be paleo, vegan, vegetarian, whatever, that doesn't matter. As long as, so long you, as go you go back to the natural form of food. Real food. Go back to the real food. Go back to nature. And start to, you know, you, you make those foods yourself. And it's actually not that hard. But I think we've lost the art of cooking. I think a lot of women... Um, over time have lost the art of cooking a meal and it all seems too hard. Mm, so it's easier mm. to go and get a packet or a bottle and kind of just put it all together. Yeah, yeah. Just grab a ready sauce and pour it on top of spaghetti. Yeah, that's and... right. But honestly, to put a few tomatoes and a bit of herb together, you can make a tomato sauce within a couple of minutes. It doesn't take that long. Mm-hmm. You, mm-hmm. you don't need to get it out of a bottle, which is when you go read the ingredients, it's not stuff you really would want to eat. Mm-hmm. So go back to the natural form of food. You suggest yep. a list of um, a, a list of foods that are rich with antioxidants. Yes, yeah, so your antioxidant foods are really, they're all your coloured foods, so mm. all your bright colours. So your things like your eggplant, your beetroot, your berries, your capsicums, anything that's got lots and lots of colour to it is high in antioxidants. So those foods are actually, antioxidants are kind of anti-ageing foods. So when we were talking before about the cells dying, what that the technical term for that is they oxidise and they break down. Mm. So antioxidants stops that breakdown of those cells and eating all the colours of the rainbow. So basically eating a diet that's full of lots of different vegetables is full of antioxidants and there's so many different foods out there. It is great to to understand that you do need to make a change to your life, but where do you get the willpower to say, hang on, I'm going to have a break, I'm going to start evaluating what I do and I I will make the decision to turn this around? I don't think it's willpower. Because whenever you're trying to do something with willpower, you have the other side, which is won't power. Mm, <laughs> and mm. and will, willpower only lasts for a very long, for a very short time. It's going back to what's important to you. What are you trying to achieve? And looking at, well, who do I want to be? What type of person do I want to be? Do I want to be in three years' time getting out of bed, being sick and run down? Or do I want to be vital? Do I want to be energetic? Mm-hmm. Um, when you can connect back to those values I was talking about, why you do what you do, if you can connect to that, that gives you purpose. 
Mm-hmm. You know, for a lot of women that I work with, their family is really important to them. Their kids are very important to them. And so, you know, they're running businesses so they can help their kids, they make money or whatever, but it all comes back down to their family. And when you can connect there, it, mm-hmm. that gives you your purpose. That mm-hmm. gives you your reason because you don't want to miss out. You don't want to, you know... Who wants to, you know, get to the age of 50, 60, whatever, and to be too sick to be enjoying their life? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, how, and I see women who, they're in business, and they work so darn hard. Mm-hmm. They just, and they burn themselves out. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and going, you do speak of adrenal burnout. Adrenal and, burnout. And the symptoms seem thing. very, very common to every, to every woman. <laughs> Totally, <laughs> it's because so many women are suffering from adrenal burnout and they don't know it. Mm-hmm. And it's because we work, we work so hard, and we just keep working. And I talk of having an energy bucket, mm-hmm. and we have this bucket, and we keep giving out of the bucket. We give out to our family, our businesses, and everything, and then there's nothing left for us. And our bucket's empty, so we think, oh, we've got to do something for me. Or, oh, I'll go and have a massage. So you go and have a massage, and you put something back into your bucket. But as soon as it's in there, you walk out of the massage, and you give that bit of energy out to something else. You give it away again. Mm-hmm. So I don't, the women I work with, I mean, I basically work with women who are adrenally burnt out, mm-hmm. or they may not be there, or they're on the way. Because I uh, honestly, I would say. I don't know what the facts around this are, but I would say 90% of women I see are adrenally burnt out or very, very close. Mm-hmm. And Let's share I, the symptoms of adrenal burnout with the listeners so they know exactly what you're talking about. So adrenal burnout, some of the symptoms, and these can be symptoms of other things too, but these are the common symptoms of adrenal burnout. Um, problems with sleep. So mm. waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning is a big one when your mind's spinning. Another one that I see with so many women that is problems with their with their bowels, constipation, diarrhea, mm. alternating or one or the other. Mm. Um, then anxiety, waking up in a an anxiety attack with your heart just racing, or just for no reason, all of a sudden you're in anxiety, or you can be depressed, or you can be irritable. Mm. Sleep. Some some women will have problems getting to sleep. Other women, as soon as their head hits the pillow, they're out like a light. Mm. that's actually a sign of adrenal burnout because you should actually be able to gradually go into sleep. But if you're that exhausted that as soon as you get to bed, you're out of it, but you still wake up tired. You go to bed completely exhausted, but you wake up tired, and that means you haven't been sleeping deep enough, so your body hasn't been recovering. Mm-hmm. Uh, other symptoms blood sh- um, with blood sugar going up and down, so craving sugary foods and sh- craving salty foods, that's another sign. So there's um, lowered immune system. So when you're, um, and with that, people say, well, I haven't been sick for five years. That's actually a problem with your immune system because you should be getting sick because there's viruses around all the time. Mm. But you, so you should be getting sick a couple of times a year, but you should also be getting better within five to seven days. So getting sick and getting and recovering is a nice, strong immune system. Never getting sick or getting sick and never getting better. That's a problem with your immune system. Mm-hmm. And, the reason why all, these are all these symptoms is because when we stress, we have these hormones called cortisol, which actually changes the way our body works. It lowers our digestive system. It lowers our immune system. It does all of these things, and it's this ongoing stress release of stress hormones that causes these changes in the body and affects our health. Mm-hmm. And then when you start getting a few of these symptoms, one after the other after the other, and then you start to get tired, it doesn't matter. You know, basically, you... Sleep just doesn't recover you. And the biggest thing that women will get to is absolute, utter exhaustion. They Mm. keep going, Mm. but there's nothing left. They can't think straight. They're foggy-headed. And when they hit that burnout stage, basically they hit a wall. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. quite often they'll be at the doctors because they don't know what's going on. And the doctor's going, oh, I've done all the blood tests and nothing's showing up. Mm -hmm. Or their thyroid might be a little bit underactive. They're putting on weight. That's another sign, having too much weight around the waist. Mm. Then you can't and you can't shift it. Mm-hmm. So what, what's the solution? So you're suffering f- from <laughs> adrenal burnout. Well, I, I know it's not a oh, it's no. it's not a pill. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't. Mm. It's it's really and that's why I run, I run programs and that's what I specifically do. It's like okay, so get back to basics. What's mm. important to you? Where do you where do you see yourself? What are, what are your goals? Let's start eating properly. Let's make the right lifestyle choices. 
Let's mm-hmm. change what's going on inside your head and start to value who you are. So that's my seven steps of the secret mum's business process. Mm-hmm. And that's what I take women through. But because I, when I was in clinic, I just used to go straight to diet, but it used to be really, really hard because we hadn't established what was really important for people and we didn't have the big picture and the goals. But that's why I do the other stuff first. Just what do you really want? Mm. And are you living the life according to your values or are you living life according to someone else's values? And we create the life that they want and sometimes that means you have to change your business or you might need to delegate things or some different things happen. But it's about getting that support around you so that when it comes to changing diet and lifestyle, it just kind of flows because this is what you want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But there's one one really simple tip that I can give you, yep. a really, really easy tip that anyone can do. One of the things that happens when we're really, really stressed is we start to breathe very shallowly. We actually breathe into the upper, upper um, quadrants of our lungs and we tend to lift our shoulders up and down. Mm-hmm. And doing that releases the stress hormone called cortisol, which is what causes all those symptoms I spoke about. Mm-hmm. So what you can do is you can breathe deeply. Mm-hmm. and actually breathe down into the bottom of your lungs. And what I, the count I talk to my clients is, is you breathe in for four, right yeah. to the bottom of the lungs, you hold it for seven, and you breathe it out for eight. Mm-hmm. And that's a, a yoga style of breathing. Yeah. And doing that, that style of breathing, just two or three breaths, automatically switches off the stress hormone cortisol. Oh, awesome. So breathe in four, hold your breathe breath for... Four, Seven, seven and, and out, out eight. 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 Four, because seven, eight. It's the out breath, which is actually the most important part of it. Most people think it's the in breath. It's actually the out breath. Mm-hmm. And that just slows everything down and it shuts down that hormone because the brain's now saying, I'm safe. Whereas when the hormone's racing, it thinks it's in danger. So it's doing all these, changing all these things in the body. So breathing, just stopping and taking some big, deep breaths will actually calm everything down and then you take you then you can make a clear decision about what your next step is going to be because you get into your head then as opposed to being reactive mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Angela uh, I, I could I could be speaking to you for another 20 <laughs> minutes but I am terribly running out of time uh, right. my last question to you is how could how could listeners get your book how could they join those training sessions that you do um, that you do offer and what tips would you give to listeners um, that are listening to us now who I know can identify very well the symptoms that we've spoken about? Okay, so my website is www.angelacouncil, mm-hmm. yep. C-O-U-N-S-E-L, mm-hmm. all one word, dot com. Mm-hmm. Angelacouncil.com. Yep. So my book is on that. Um, at the moment, I have a series of... Um, videos out on stress reducing stress so you can sign up for them on that website Mm -hmm. and my next program starts on the 5th of june where i will be taking people through it's an online program eight weeks where i actually taking people through all the steps of the secret mum's business program as well there is a health program that goes along with that where i'm actually going to go through diet um cleaning the um the diet up the lifestyle and all that as well so what once again, through that website or just an email to me, which is Angela at AngelaCouncil.com. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So all the info is there, AngelaCouncil.com. Yes. Your final tips to our listeners. Um, it all starts with what's going on in your head. Start to value yourself. Be really clear on what you want in your life. Get rid of the shoulds, have to, need to. Do what you want because it comes from your heart. And when you're doing that, the stress will go. Stop worrying about what the rest of the world wants. Mm-hmm. Do what you want. And when you'll do what you want, you will actually be a role model for everybody else. And that will allow them to be able to do what they want. And honestly, life just changes around when you decide to get out of stress. It's your decision. Mm-hmm. Angela Council, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun. <laughs> Mutual. Angela Council, um, health and mindset coach, and we'll be back after the break. 
بالخدمه او بالخدمه بالخدمه مع لارا تو سليمان راجع بعد البريك